Plays it out wide to Nelson Semedo who has a lot of pace in his locker. Still Nelson Semedo taking it wide. Still Semedo whips in a good cross. It's Luis Suarez with another bicycle kick. What's he just done there against Real Madrid of all teams? Luis Suarez comes up clutch with an unbelievable goal in a Champions League game as well. In a quarterfinal El Clasico as well. Hey guys, how is it going? It is S2G and welcome to the 18th episode of the Barcelona Career Mode series. Last episode was amazing because we managed to knock out Real Madrid from the Champions League, which means this year in this series in the Champions League, we will be getting a new winner. Of course, Real Madrid won the competition three times in a row, but we've managed to put that streak to an end. But we cannot catch a break as we've drawn probably the toughest team remaining in the competition, Bayern Munich and two games against them are going to be grueling. But I'm really hoping we can find ourselves in the Champions League final come those two games. But today's episode, the focus is all on La Liga. We are league leaders though by four points versus Atletico Madrid who are in second. Madrid, they are not doing that well. Seven points behind us. We've got only six games remaining though and we're going to be playing the three games in today's episode so hopefully we can make a giant leap towards winning la liga by winning maybe the three games in this episode itself you know sociedad alaves levante all seem winnable games and i'm really hoping we can get the job done and the episode after that we've got the two games against bayern munich we are practically nearing the business end of the season let's hope we can secure both the la liga trophy and of course the Champions League. All right, as usual, let's start the episode off with a bit of a press conference. First question, what are you going to focus on, La Liga or the Champions League? Honestly, both the trophies right now at this point are equally important to me. We've got a good advantage in La Liga. Four points at this stage of the season, I feel is pretty good so i feel like we can be a bit more relaxed in the league especially when there is the champions league game just after you know a league game and those games i will rotate but apart from that i'm pretty much gonna go all out in la liga to try and get as many points as possible because i do want to win la liga and at least win the double this season because that will be amazing but of course if i had to choose between the la liga or the champions league i will be going champions league all day every day all right next question are you going to take actions due to pk's horrible performances and also a bit of a suggestion going with the comment you should sell him and get davinson sanchez he plays the bar away and has been linked in real life now i like davinson sanchez but i'm not really looking to sell pk He's been playing terribly for me, but we still know he's pretty decent. I mean, he's not bad. He's just having a bit of a rough patch. That does make him our backup centre-back going forward as Longley has practically established a first-team starting spot after those fantastic performances against Real Madrid. So, PK will now be our backup centre-back. If he's not happy with that, then we will look to sell him. Until then, I'm pretty happy to have an 86-rated player like PK on the bench because he, he's, he's just a great player to have at the club. Even though he may not be starting game in and game out for us, I'd love to have a quality player like him on the bench. So I'm not sure about selling him yet, but I am sure about demoting him to the bench because of his recent performances. And if he, you know, picks up his form, we'll put him back in the team. That's the plan I've got in my mind, at least as of now. Let me know what are your thoughts on this situation. Final question of the day. You should sign youth prospects who were raised in La Masia like Sergio Gomez, Jordi Mbula and Artema Traore. They all have at least 87 potential and I think in real life Barca actually has buyback options on them. You are right, Barca do have buy buyback options on most of these players. And I think that's what we're going to be doing. And not now though, not in this first season. In the second season, we're going to actually look to build a pretty amazing young Barcelona side or, or, or a youth squad as such. Would you know the likes of Ricky Puig, Alenia, Grimaldo, De Ligt. And all these young players that we have at the club. I think it'd be a really nice opportunity and, you know, a good way to build for the future. I think we're going to definitely be bringing at least one or two of those players back to Barcelona in the next season though. And that is it for today's press conference. If you guys have any more questions, put them down in the comment section below. Let's move on. Well, player of the episode goes to Nelson Smedo. I feel like he completely deserves this. It's the first time a defender is winning this award in this series. So credit to Nelson Smedo. He put in that great cross to Luis Suarez, who then, of course, scored off a bicycle kick. Suarez was brilliant in that first game, but Nelson Smedo, over the course of the episode, was just 
just brilliant and I kind of feel like we owe him a starting spot in the upcoming games because he's just been that good and he is your player of the episode. Well that game against Real Madrid has certainly taken a toll on our players so for this big game against the Basque side Real Sociedad we've had to make a lot of changes. PK does get into the lineup because both Umtiti and Longley aren't fully fit and he also captains the side Ricky Puig and De Jong and Arthur in midfield. Now that is a midfield I really fancy and up front Dembele, Werner and Malcolm. It's a solid side. Let's see if we can pick up the three points without the big star players that we have at the club. Artur finds Malcolm. Malcolm in behind to Joshua Kimmich who puts in a great cross. Usman Dembele really should have done better there. Kimmich, credit to him. That was a solid delivery there from him. But Dembele, he's got to be putting that one on target. Here we go on the attack. Ronaldo inside to Artur. Artur gets fouled. How is that on a foul ref? We still have the ball though. It's still Artur. Artur inside now to Joshua Kimmich, what a chance for Kimmich and he somehow managed to get that one into the back of the net. Firstly, we should have been given a foul there, we weren't and then it was some nice build up play with the likes of Ricky Puig and Artur and finally it's Joshua Kimmich who's having a fantastic game by the way who gets the goal. Let's take a look at that goal again. Artur plays this one into Joshua Kimmich who actually not makes the keeper and makes it 1-0 against Real Sociedad. Malcolm to De Jong, now Ricky Puig cuts this one inside and Real Sociedad do manage to clear that one away. We're playing some nice football considering this is basically my backup team. We are playing really well and I'm glad this team is gelling. To corner for our opponents, that's just awful it's defending from Gerard Piquet. He lost his marker there and then Joshua Kimmich couldn't, you know, even jump. But Ter Stegen did make a good save there. Look at Piquet just lose his marker casually. Great thing we've got to Stegen in goal. Here's Malcolm, finds Werner. Werner to Usman Dembele, this is brilliant. Usman Dembele tries to cut it back. He took such a heavy touch then that just completely ruined the attack. Although we are leading right now, this game could go either way. One goal for us and of course we'll probably get the three points. But Real Sociedad could easily equalize with just one chance. We know how difficult FIFA 19 is and how bad we've been defensively as this could be the chance for our opponents. Thankfully, PK this time does put in a clearance and gets the ball away. And that might actually start one of our counter-attacks as well. Here's Malcolm. What a chance for the Brazilian. Malcolm! And that should be it for this one. Credit where it's due. PK started this move by making a nice clearance. And now Barcelona lead two goals to nil. And if I'm not wrong, it was Ricky Puig with this fabulous lobbed through ball to Malcolm. Again, Malcolm's finish was nice as well. 2-0 against Real Sociedad. Well, there you have it. A pretty easy win, to be honest. I was expecting La Real to show a bit more fight, but our midfield just dominated this game. Credit to Ricky Puig and Artur, who just ran the show for us. Kimmich as well came in, put in a great shift. Again, now the decision between Kimmich and Semedo is going to get a lot harder because now even Kimmich is performing, but our midfield was sublime. Ricky Puig is going to be a star for us in, in this series at some point, but really glad that we've managed to pick up the three points against La Real. Well, this is a bit weird because I feel like we've been giving Juan Miranta a few chances here and there, more than what he probably deserves at this stage of his career. Well, it's about my playtime, that is his subject. If I have a future at the club, then I'd like you to show some faith in me and give me a chance in the team. Alright, you know what? We'll give him a chance in, I think, the third game of this episode. Let's see how he does. PK's happy with the game time he's getting, even though we kind of dropped him to the bench. Oh well, I mean, if he's happy, that's great. Well, guys, I've changed the training sessions a bit for the players. I've included two of my youth academy players in the list because a lot of you guys in the comments have been asking me to do so. So Ramsey and Pino have been put in, in you know, training. Hopefully their overall will increase soon. Miranda, Puj and Alenia still retain training sessions. So let's sim this one and see what happens. Miranda now up to a 73, which is great. He's now got 80 sprint speed. An A for Ricky Puj and an A for Alenia. That's one of the best grades I've seen in training in FIFA 19, which is great to see. Well, Atletico Madrid are just four points behind us. I guess they managed to win their previous game as well. Real Madrid, seven points behind us. Let's hope we can keep going in La Liga. There is no space for us or room for us to mess up or slip up and drop points because otherwise, Atletico Madrid could be just a point behind us and that is a scenario we absolutely do not want. Let's take a look and see our remaining La Liga games with any, you know, difficult games that could probably cause us problems. 
Alaves, Levante, you'd expect us to get the job done. Celta away. Now, that is a very tricky game because we know they've got a good team. Hetafe at home shouldn't be much of a problem. And Eibar away the same case. So, this Celta game could be very crucial. Let's hope we don't, you know, mess up against these, you know, weaker sides. Next up, we've got Alaves in La Liga. Wanted to give a bit of appreciation to Ricky Puig. He's been so good this season. I know he's only played nine games, eight games if you exclude the preseason tournament, but he's progressed so much as a player. I'm glad I didn't loan him out. I don't think I will. I think next season, if we do sell Vidal, we're just going to use Puig and Alenia to replace him because... I just love Ricky Puig in this game. His stats are also now getting a lot better, a lot more usable, which is great to see. He's got decent agility, decent sprint speed as well now. His passing stats already look so, so good. Plus 10 shot passing, that's brilliant. So I'm just really loving Ricky Puig in FIFA 19. He's going to be a star for us in the future. Well, guys, for this game against Alaves, I'm going to be using my 4-3-2-1 formation. And as you guys can see, it is a preset game plan. So it's the ultra attacking game plan. I'm just going to be using it from the get go from the start of the game. So I'm just going to be using the D pad and switching to ultra attacking as soon as we get started. So we can have a bit of a more narrow formation with Messi playing in a more central role because Messi lately hasn't been up to the mark in comparison to Luis Suarez and the rest of the team. But that's just because maybe playing him out wide isn't the best option these days so let's see how things go playing him in a 4-3-2-1 and i really do want to get the three points in this one away from home as you guys know atleti just four points behind us there is no room for a slip up pogba here's messi a bit of a heavy touch but he controls it back well finds felipe coutinho now to Jordi Alba, this is absolutely brilliant, cut back into Messi and that's probably the easiest goal Leo Messi is ever going to score. Jordi Alba and Leo Messi combine in this series, I believe, for the first time. It's a combination that's been so amazing in real life and this one was brilliant. I was going to take the shot with Jordi Alba but then I saw the keeper coming forward and I thought, you know what? Perfect opportunity to lay it off to Leo Messi and Messi did mess up. 1-0 Barcelona. Fantastic build-up play for this goal. Back to Messi. Messi now in behind to Jordi Alba. Alba cuts this one back as well, but the defender puts in a block. Tell you what, with this new 4-3-2-1 formation that we are using, Jordi Alba is getting into all sorts of dangerous positions, which I guess is the perfect thing because we know how effective he can be. Cutting those ball backs to our, you know, forwards. Sees Leo Messi. Messi sees Nelson Tomato and here goes Nelson Tomato. We are destroying them with our full backs in this one. We couldn't convert that, but the attacking play we are putting on display today has been one of the best I've seen in this series. Let's hope we can keep it going because we'll need such football against Bayern Munich in a couple of weeks. Now Leo Messi, now Nelson Smedo. This is absolutely brilliant football. Luis Suarez to Felipe Coutinho. This has been a stunning display of football against Alaves away from home. Absolutely brilliant. The passing play we're showing today has is probably the best I've done in this series. Like, you saw the way Messi first passed it to Semedo and the way we just worked the ball around the box. Just take a look at this. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And then the finish from Coutinho with his left foot. Brilliant. 2-0 Barcelona. We are on a roll. Now Nelson Tomato, here he goes again. Nelson Tomato cuts this one back to Leo Messi. Messi in the box now. Messi shoots and the keeper makes the save. Messi was almost going to get tripped inside the box. That would have been a pen. But oh well, Messi always tries to stay on his feet and he did exactly that. Now Luis Suarez. Brilliant there to find Messi. Messi finesses it. Absolutely brilliant from Leo Messi and Luis Suarez of course. He did the LTRT dribbling or the skill dribbling, whatever it is that it's called. Found Messi in a dangerous position and Messi did, of course, what Leo Messi does. Finesse it into the back of the net. There you go. Messi with a brace. I was kind of getting a bit scared with Messi's decline of him not scoring. Well, there's no decline. That was just a bit of a bad patch of form. Leo Messi is back in business. Alaves may have a chance. They're overloading the attack. And there you go, they have managed to get themselves probably a consolation goal. They were just overloading all their players forward and I just couldn't deal with that for that moment. It was a counter-attack and Alaves have managed to score. Longley probably should have been doing better but oh well, 3-1 Barcelona. We're still dominating the game. Another three points on board and I must say this, this was one of the best performances I've put in this series with 
this Barcelona side. The football we were playing was just gorgeous. That's the best way to describe it. Yes, we conceded that scrappy goal. Let's just be honest, FIFA 19, you are going to concede goals against the AI, and we did exactly that. But the way we played, the way Messi played, the way this team played was just brilliant. Let's hope we can keep it going, because against Bayern, if we play like this, they're going to get destroyed. Well, Atletico Madrid still continue to win games, which means they are still four points behind us. But four games remaining, I still feel like we've got a good chance of getting the job done and winning La Liga. Madrid have dropped points and now they are pretty much out of the title race. They are 10 points behind us. And also, a bit of a weird one here. Look at this, Barcelona selection pleasing PK. Of course, PK did message us about, you know, him being happy, but it's so weird. The day we decide to, you know, bench PK and use Longley as our first choice center back, PK comes and tells us he's enjoying his game time. This game sometimes baffles me, I'll be honest. Well, Leo Messi now top scorer of La Liga alongside Christian Stuani and Bas Dost with 15 goals. He's got the best goal ratio, so if the golden boot is awarded right now, it would go to Leo Messi, I believe. Let's hope Messi can win this award as well. We all want Messi to win the golden boot, right? But of course, with Champions League games coming up soon, I can't play Messi against Levante. We need him fully fit for Bayern, so he'll still have a couple of league games along the way to try and score and of course win the golden boot award. For now, let's get right into this one against Levante. Well, boys, here's our team for this one against Levante at home. And of course, you guys can notice a ton of changes because we've got the buy-in game in a couple of days and we need to have all our players fully fit. But you guys can see I've given an opportunity to, uh, you know, Carlos Alenia and even Juan Miranda. As you guys know, Miranda wants game time. I thought this is the perfect chance to give him that game time. Up front, we've got Tempele, Werner and Malcolm. Let's hope we can see a similar performance to that one against Real Sociedad. And if we do see, I think this should be an easy game. Let's get right into this one. Here we go, Juan Miranda. In behind to Usman Dembele, we're already on the front foot in this one, but they do clear the ball away. Again, positive start already. Oh, here's Arturo Vidal. Vidal strikes it with his left foot. He doesn't really have a weak foot because he's got four-star weak foot, but that was actually a bit of a cracking attempt, to be honest. This is going to be his last season at the club. I'm not enjoying Vidal this year in FIFA. I will be selling him on next season, so it'd be nice to see him score for the club in an official game. Here's Artur in a solid spot, finds Timo Werner. Werner turns well, Werner shoots, but oh, such a bad attempt from Timo Werner. He's been playing really well for us lately, but what even was that for a finish? From that position, you expect a striker to at least put it on target. Here's PK going on one of those runs. Actually, he's done really well then. Here we go on the attack. It is Malcolm. Crossblade in into Usman Dembele. What? Come on, man. Dembele, you've got to be scoring those. But fair play to Gerard Piquet for bringing the ball out of the back in such quick manner. Incisive passing for us to create this chance. But uh, disappointing to have missed that. We might be on the counter-attack. What was that defending though from Levante? As now Usman Dembele maybe one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Dembele on his right foot. Come on! Dembele, you've got to be scoring those. He's now missed two easy chances in this game. Timo Werner in behind to Malcolm. Absolutely brilliant though from Timo Werner. I'm going to cut this one back to Artur who again hits the post. What is going on in this game? We've hit the post like twice. Come on, man. I'm making a couple of changes for this one. I'm bringing on De Jong for Arturo Vidal and I'll bring off Alenia for Ricky Puig. Alenia didn't really have that much of an impact in this one. So let's hope the changes can help us get the three points. Ricky Puig. Oh, this is brilliant. Usman Dembele now with the chance. He crosses this one into Artur with the header. What a header from the Brazilian. I was not expecting him to pull that one off. I thought I made the mistake with the cross, but it somehow works. Great build-up play again. Ricky Puig again was at the center of it. You know, he played a great pass in side to Artur, if I'm not wrong. Again, fantastic build-up play. Look at that from Ricky Puig. Finds Artur. Artur to Dembele. Dembele with the cross. Another assist for the Frenchman. And then the Brazilian Artur finishes the move by scoring a great header. Barcelona lead 1-0. That should have been, oh man, this is why I don't like playing Silicon. It just feels like he never can make a single save. To be fair, Miranda was kind of at fault for that goal because he was the one who gave the ball away. But then again, Silicon, at least make a, make a save like sometimes, please. Ah, oh, so frustrating to have worked so hard to get the goal and to concede a goal like that. 
Well, there you have it, guys. Full time, of course. It's a bit of a disappointment, dropping points against Levante. At the same time, I feel like we can take a lot of positives from this game. One of them being Ricky Puig and in general, the midfield of Artur, Ricky Puig and Frankie De Jong. I think that is going to be our backup midfield next season. We don't need Arturo Vidal. We can have Alenia as maybe an extra option, but Ricky Puig is an absolute baller. We were creating and keeping possession a lot more once we brought him and De Jong on. So that's that. It was a bit unfortunate that we conceded a goal like that. But anyways... Next episode, we've got to be on our A game as we do face Bayern. Let's take a look at the La Liga table though. Well guys, that loss has, I guess, put us in a bit of a troubling situation. We are now just two points above Atletico Madrid. Atleti are continuing to win in games, which is causing us problems. They've just had a big win against Girona. I want to see the next fixtures, fixtures of Atleti down the wire. Let's just say that we cannot afford any more slip-ups. Man, I'm, I'm getting really tense. And our next game, it's against Celta Vigo. Thankfully, Celta aren't having the best of seasons. So maybe we can take advantage of that. I'm interested to see the games Atleti play coming very soon. So I can't find out which games Atleti are playing or against whom Atleti are playing. So they're playing against Espanyol first. Away from home, Espanyol could cause them a few problems. Then they have Sevilla. All right, that's great. I feel like they can drop points against Sevilla. And then they have Levante. But to be fair, they could win all those games. So we cannot rely on them. We've got to be, you know, really careful in La Liga. Otherwise, we could end up losing the trophy on the last match day or something like that, which will be heartbreaking. The next episode, though, is going to be all about the Champions League. It genuinely doesn't get any bigger than this. Robert Lewandowski and Leo Messi going head to head. It's going to be intense, let's just say that. And that is it, guys, for today's episode. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this one. And if you guys have had, make sure to show your support by dropping a like on this video. And if you're watching my content for the very first time, do subscribe for more FIFA 19 career mode content. And I'll see you guys next time.